Hi, my scholars. This is my school channel, and my name is Abiola. For this video lesson, you are going to join me to solve the Jam CBT Pass question for the subject chemistry, the year 2022. You don't want to go anywhere, stay with us, and we will be right back. Welcome you back to the My YouTube channel. So right here we have question 21 to question 40 to tackle. So let's begin with question 21. Crude petroleum is converted to useful products by the process of fractional distillation. Right. So you know, basically, you are trying to separate um, a particular mixture into its components, right, or fractions, right. So and you know, um, crude. Uh, petroleum like we have in this question is actually a mixture you know you have your petrol you have your gas you have your oil you know you have um, your bitumen and so much more inside so one process that is actually um, made right or that is actually created you know to be able to have this extract from it is your fractional distillation uh, fractional crystallization you're talking about solute right and one thing that can actually make this process effective is when the solutes they have a um, different temperature you know of their solubility in a given solvent okay so then we have filtration you know using your filter paper you know um, for instance when you have a um, chalk you know in water you know that does not uh, completely dissolve in the water so you can filter it off then we have chromatography this is very useful when it comes to food testing you know beverage te testing drug testing and so much more so the correct option to this question is option b for fractional distillation question 22 an organic compound contains 69% carbon, 15.3% hydrogen, and 30.7% uh, oxygen. Right? So we have to calculate the empirical formula. So what we just need to do is very, very easy. You know, we have um, the symbols right here. Okay, 16. Oh, sorry. That's for oxygen. All right. So for carbon, what is the percentage? We have 69, you know, divided by this. Okay, then the same thing for oxygen. What is the percentage present? You know, 15.3. You can see we have this. Then um, we have for oxygen, what is the percentage present? I have 30.7, you know, over 16. So by the time I divide this, I should have um, roughly 5.75, you know, to put. Then this is still 15.3. Then I have um, 1.92. You can just punch your calculator, you know, to follow up. All right, so what we just need to do at this point is to divide by the smallest value. And the smallest value here is actually 1.92. So if we divide 1.92, 92, 1.92, 1.92. You know, roughly I should have um, 2 point something here. So roughly I can bring it to 3. So I have carbon as 3. Then what about hydrogen? If I divide this, you know, I should have it somewhat around um, 7 point something. So that's like 8, right? I can bring it roughly to 8. Then this divided by this is 1. So it's 0, 1. So this is the empirical uh, formula. So you can see we can find that in option D. So option D is the right option. Question 23, so we have um, two moles of hydrogen react with um, one mole of oxygen to give us two moles of water. So from the equation above, calculate the volume of unreacted, that is unused oxygen, if a mixture of 50 cm cube of hydrogen and 75 cm cube of oxygen are involved. So this is just all we need to do. So you can see, we are told that um, for hydrogen, how much uh, quantity is supplied? We have 50, right? Okay, then for oxygen, how much quantity supply we have 75, you know, to produce this. So basically, you can see, so we are told that um, two moles of hydrogen reacts with one mole of oxygen. So that means um, two hydrogen will react with one oxygen, right? That means um, 20 hydrogens will react with what? 10 oxygen. Do we see that now? So right here, 50 hydrogen will react with what? 25 oxygen so how much oxygen have we used we've only used um 25 right and the total supplied you know according to the question is actually 75 so 75 minus 25 that is 50 so we have 50 cm cube 
left. So you just have to understand how it works. So you can see um, two moles of this react to one mole of this, right? That means uh, for every times two, we just have times one here. So um, if we have 25 here, 25 times two, that is 50. 25 times one, that is 25. So you can see. So uh, we use 25 out of the 25 supply. So how many is left that is unused, unreacted? That is the 50 that we have right here. So option B is the correct option. Question 24. In which of the following will hydrogen form a ionic compound? So take note of that, a ionic compound. So that is, of course, when you have your hydrogen reacting with alkali metals and basically alkali earth metals, you know, except for probably beryllium. All right, so in that reaction, what you are going to be getting is a salt, right? So uh, that's why you will now see it's called uh, probably something like uh, your saline hydride right salt hydride so that's what we have here so and we know that sodium belongs to group one so we refer to group one as what the alkali metals so this is the reaction right here so option b is the correct option 25 if the volume of a given mass of gas at zero degrees celsius is 29.5 centimeter cube all right so what will be the volume of the gas at 15 degrees celsius you know given that the pressure remains constant so right here you are giving volume you are giving temperature and we are told that pressure remains constant you know that tells you that the concept that we are trying to describe is of course charles law so if you recall charles law you realize that a pressure is held constant or it remains constant right so that means you remember your charles law you know we have v1 over t1 equals to v2 over t2 so you can see right here i'm supplied with my t1 this is my v1 right what am i looking for i'm looking for my v2 right and i have my t2 okay do we see that right here so we have to make up v2 the subject of the formula so definitely if i cross multiply i'm going to have this my v2 is actually equals to this times this you know my v1 times my t2 over t1 so all you just need to do is to bring this to your standard um, xtp you know at stp if you bring this to your kelvin scale that would just be 0 0.2 is 0 plus 273 kelvin you know that gives you 273 kelvin so your t1 will be expressed as what 273 kelvin then your t2 will just be 15 you know plus 273 that gives me 288 so basically my expression this is what my expression is going to look like this is what we are looking at now right so we've already um, make, we've made a v2 the subject of the formula so basically this is what i'm going to have i'm going to have my v1 which is 29 you know 0.5 times my t2 what is my t2 my t2 is 288 you know converting to the kelvin scale then my t1 is of course 273 so by the time i carry out this multiplication i divide by this roughly i should have somewhat around 31.1 then what are we looking for volume what is the need for volume centimeter cube this is very essential when you are working around the theoretical question when you are asked to apply units so 31.1 where do we have that we have that in option d so option d is the right option 26 the reactions below represent neutralization reaction in which of them is the value of your this your enthalpy is so we're looking at is so of course you will get the highest when there is a very high degree of dissociation and if you look at acids you know we have the strong acids and the weak acids right so strong acid you can see them they dissociate you know they are united completely in water so that is one distinct picture regarding strong acid why for weak acid you know their dissociation is actually partial so this leads to a low value regarding your delta h you can see that now so where do we have a strong acid right and a strong base that is where you should have your highest value so if you look at this we have this acid we have this so this is the weak acid and a strong base so your value will not be high okay you can look at this is a ammonium hydroxide right and ACL. even though this is a weak base you know and a strong acid your value will not be high so let's look at a strong acid sodium hydroxide and a strong a strong base rather and a strong acid so strong uh, sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid so you can see here you will have the highest value you are looking for and of course like we mentioned this is our neutralization reaction where you have salt and water formed as your end product so we have your ethanoic acid right here you can see a weak acid and a strong base of course you still have a low value so where do we have our highest value it is right here strong acid and a strong base so option c is the correct option 27 the pollutant usually present in a city which generates its electricity from coal is what 
All right, so we have um, some pollutants that you can get when you have your major um, source, you know, from coal to generate electricity. All right, so we have um, the sulfur, sulfur, sulfur four oxide like this, right? We have the oxides of nitrogen, we have carbon four oxide. So if you look at this um, compilation, we have, this is carbon monoxide, so this is not carbon four oxide. So this is actually out of the equation. So the major pollutant is what we have here. I can call smog an after effect, you know, from the pollutants like um, oxides of nitrogen, right? So a direct pollutant, which is uh, most viable here, is your sulfur four oxide, you know. And of course, this causes acid rain, all right? So the correct option is option D for sulfur four oxide. We strongly recommend that you have a jam simulated experience before your exam. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the MySchool website. So right there you get to download the MySchool mobile app for your Android devices or you can go for the MySchool software for your laptops and other devices. So right here we have um, question 28 to tackle. The dehydration of this particular compound will give what? All right, so basically this is an alcohol, this is an alcohol, right? So, and um, if you dehydrate alcohol, what you are going to get is um, your alkene, A-L-K-E-N-E, -E, right? So, this is actually done, you know, with excess H2SO4, you know, at a high temperature, you know, somewhat around, um, above 170 degrees Celsius. So, what you are going to get at the end of the day is, of course, an alkene, right? And that is what we have right here, double bond. Okay, so even when you go back to the lab preparation of um, alkene, you know, it's actually from dehydration of alcohol. So this is a very salient um, reference, you know, to put. So the correct option is option D. So you can see the rest. You know, this would have happened uh, probably when you have, um, when you react this, you know, when this excess in comparison to the acid and you have lower temperature, you should be getting a diethyl ether, you know, something like that. So definitely the correct option, according to the context of the question provided, is option D. You know, you are going to get an out. King, right option D is the right option. And do not forget to hit that like button. Also, please click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get informed immediately we upload the next video lesson just for you. Question 29. When it is absorbed during a chemical reaction, the reaction is said to be what? So absorbing it, that is an endothermic reaction. The release of it you know, that is exo, outside, you know, exothermic reaction. When it comes to thermodynamic, you know, we are looking at um, the rapport, the relationship between work, heat, energy, temperature, and the like. So that is where you have those laws of thermodynamics, you know, where energy can never be created, not destroyed, you know, and the like. So uh, we have isotherma. From the word isotherma, that tells you constant temperature, uh, you know, when there are changes in volume, pressure, and what have you. So basically, the correct option is option D for an endothermic reaction. Sure. Question 30. Which of the following best represents solid gas mixture or to put properly solid in gas mixture? So uh, we're looking at examples like your um, like your dust, you know, like your smoke, like your ice cloud, right? Um, so definitely this is where you find it. You know, that is option D, so option D for smoke. So every other thing we have right here does not fall under this classification solid in gas mixture. So option D is the right option. 31. The equation above illustrates what, right? So if you recall your HCl um, and your sodium hydroxide, right? The HCl, that's where you have your this, your H+, plus. then from your NaOH, that's where you have your OH-. minus. I know that's the reaction between an acid and a base. And what do you get? You have your salt and water only. So we have the water right here. So this is definitely a neutralization reaction. And where do we find that in our options? We find that in option D. So option D is the correct option. Question 32. Electrons enter into orbitals in order of increasing energy as exemplified by what? All right, so basically, you know, when you recall your 1s2, your 2s2, your 2p6, your 3s2, your 3p6, you know, your 4s2, then your 3d, and what have you. So basically, that is what we call the build up principle, or you can refer to it as your half bar uh, principle. So, right here, what you want to happen at first is you want to fill this up, then you fill this up, right? So, if you look at this, for the P, we have the X, we have the Y, we have the Z. So, how is it filled up? So, at first, just take note of this with me, okay? So, I have my X, I have my Y, then I have my Z. So, right here, I will fill this first. 
you know, it goes like this, right? Then I start again from here, right? Fill this, then fill this, right? So from here now, what do I have? I have two here, I have one, one. Before I now move to the 3S, do you see that now? So this is for the 2P, right? The 2P orbital. So where do we have this representation correctly? I guess we have that with option, option B. So you can see 1S to 2S2. Then when it came to the P where we have the X, Y, Z, it fills it first, one, one, one. Then it comes here, you know, to fill the two. Then once it's done, then you can, I want, this now comes to two, two, then we can now come to one right here. So we don't jump the gun. So the correct option is option B, right, for what we are looking for. Number 33, we have wrought iron is obtained by eating cast iron, right, in a furnace with what? So uh, basically, if you are looking at the three types of iron, we have your pig iron, which contains impurities, you know, uh, a good amount of it. Then you have your cast iron. You know, um, for the cast iron, you use it for things like your cookers, your stoves, your radiators, and what have you. Then we now have your wrought iron. That is the purest form. Of course, I think the amount of impurities or carbon there is about maybe 0 0.1. So this is actually the purest form of what we're looking at. You know, uh, you want to make us true iron rod and the like. So we come to this. Right. So uh, how do we get this wrought iron from your cast iron? All you just need to do is to actually um, engage this, right, with your hematite. That is Fe2. O3. So the correct option is option B for the hematite. 34. In the extraction of iron, hot air is introduced into the blast furnace through what? So uh, basically, you know, you load your ingredients from the top of the furnace. Then when you want to introduce this hot air, the blast of this hot air is actually through the bottom. And um, that is through small pipes that we refer to as your two years. So the correct option is option D. Question 35. How many bonding pairs are present in carbon-4 oxide? So for carbon-4 oxide, you know, we have four bond pairs, right? Um, then as well, the shape there is actually linear. You are looking at the bond angle of 180 degrees. And uh, as well, you are looking at, um, you know, when it comes to the type of covalent bond, that is double bond, of course. So uh, if we are asked, how many bond pairs do we have? We have four bond pairs. So option A is the right option. 36. 2-methylpropoanein is a structural isomer of what? Alright, so you have your ENE, so we're talking about alkene. So, uh, alkenes that actually have um, four or more carbon atoms, you know, they can exhibit um, different types of isomerism. We have your, um, your structural, your positional, your geometric isomerism. So, right here we're talking about structural isomerism. Then, this is definitely for uh, butene, or you can say your butuan in. So, the structural isomers, uh, we're looking at your butene or your butuan in. Uh, you are looking at your butu in or your two butene, then you have your two methyl propene, propene which we have um, right here. So the correct option is option D. So it can be but, uh, two butene or butu in, or you can have another structural isomer as your butu one in or your butene, then as this as well. So we have three structural isomers and one is represented here. So the correct option is option D for but two in. Question 37. Alkanes are mainly used as what? So this is a question that um, we should be able to respond to, you know, um, conveniently. So basically, alkanes are used as for. So basically, either um, domestic or industrial. So this is the correct option. Option C is the right option. Do you have questions bothering you? That's all for now. So all you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. So right there, those questions that you've had with you, it is time you drop them right using that link. And right there, our solution providers are going to engage you and help you out. So join me as I solve question 38. What volume of dm cube of water will be added to 10 dm cube of this? Right, this is the concentration of the acid solution to give a solution of this. All right, so basically, you just recall your principle of the um, dilution. You have seen one V1 because your C2, uh, V2. So basically, we are looking at what volume, right? Your V2. So, what's my V1? My C1 is actually 2 points this more per dm cube. So, that is 2 times my volume, right? We have 10 equals to my C2, I have 0 0.5. Okay, then my B2, this is actually what I'm looking for. What do I do? Divide both sides by 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. So basically this is gone. So I have my V2 equals 2 times this, that is 20 over 0 0.5. So 20 divided by 0 0.5, that is 40. So 40 dm cube 
of water should be added in order to get this. So option B is the right option. We strongly believe that it is possible that you have better explanations or solutions to the questions we have answered so far. All you just need to do is to use that comment section below, kindly indicate the question number and the solutions you would like to share. 39. The above table shows the compositions of the atmosphere of planet X. So which of these gases are present in higher percentages on Earth? Right. So um, if you look at this closely, you know, you are looking at um, a planet X, right? So we have this in higher percentage, this in higher percentage, this, uh, this in higher percentage then compared to this. All right. So when we now come to the planet Earth, so which of these gases are present in higher percentages? right in higher percentages on earth so if it is in planet x of course we have oxygen and nitrogen they are present in higher percentages okay so then when we still come to the earth so which one of them are actually present in higher percentages of course we are going to point to your nitrogen then what next are we going to point to we are going to point to your oxygen before we now get to this so these are what we have in our higher percentages even on earth so the right compilation is found in option d so option d is the right option question number 40 add water is water with high concentrations of dissolved ions in particular calcium and magnesium all right so um, some will tell you of course iron uh, right and um, probably in rivers in wells and the likes all right so basically either you're talking about um temporary hard water or um, permanent hard water definitely you know the soluble salts that you are going to be finding all right that will be of calcium and magnesium ions these are very very important so the correct option is actually option a calcium and magnesium a so right here we've come to the end of this video content but definitely we have more content coming all you just need to do is to hit that like button also do not forget the subscribe button always tap on bell notification for you to get informed immediately we upload the next video lesson just for you